I'm Danielle, and welcome to This Enchanted House. Today, I am talking about my sunroom makeover, and it only took me three years, some pretty, three-ish years. So, uh, the reason I'm bringing that up, and sort of the point of this video, is I want to talk about slow decorating. And we have to start kind of with the makeover shows of the late 90s, early 2000s, where they come in and totally redo your room over a weekend and then totally transform it. And that format still exists here on YouTube. There's plenty of people, my amazing room makeover. And it's like they filmed it and they did it in a weekend. And it's like, why can't I do that? And the truth is, a lot of that stage, and even though they're filming it in a weekend, or it seems very quick because they, you know, they film painting it, and then you see them, you know, doing, moving in furniture and doing accessories and the shop trips are all in one video. Usually that takes place over a series of weeks or months or even years in my case. Um, so the idea with slow decorating is to remind people that you don't have to do everything all at once. It can happen over time. You will find things that you like. You don't have to find everything at once. You don't have to like go out and have this huge long shopping trip where you buy all your accessories and stuff. Um, and even before we talk about the sunroom, one of the great examples is behind me, um, my fireplace. If you go back, watch some of my old videos, there's none of this is back here. It's just, you know, very empty because that was a starting point. Um, I kind of left the fireplace for last because I had little kids and I didn't want to put like breakable things here. Um, but as of 2020, it, um, my kids were older. I wasn't watching my nieces and nephews anymore. So I started going to estate sales and collecting things that I really liked and found beautiful. And the results behind you. Now some things, I really want to hang up the broom and the, the, bed, the warming pan there. But otherwise, like all the neat stuff back here, it's collected over time. It's, you know, and I'm still adding to it and changing to it. Um, as we talk about my sunroom, you'll see I have some plants back here, but this is where all my plants come to live during the winter when they're not out in the, in the sunroom. So let's actually talk about the sunroom. Um, I'm going to start by just showing you um, some before footage I took in 2020, which is when we started the sunroom. It was, um, before that, the sunroom acted as a playroom, basically, for my kids. All their outdoor toys were there, and, like, they could kind of, like, if they wanted to be more rambunctious, it was a great room for them to go be rambunctious in, because, you know, there was nothing out there but their, basically, their toys and their stuff. Um, during the winter, it acted as storage for all my outdoor statuary, garden statuary. And st it still does during the winter because it is a three season porch, which means it's not heated or air conditioned in any way. Like it's kind of subject to whatever the temperature is outside. Um, it's a great way of being outside and inside at the same time. But because in winter, you don't really want to spend time out there. It's Michigan, it's cold. Um, it acts as storage for all these all our outdoor stuff kind of comes in there and, until we can get like a shed or something. Um, but yeah, so let's take a look at the before stuff. Okay, so this is the sunroom that's going to be the subject of, of my um, room makeover. Um, this is sort of when we bought the house, we were like, uh, well, it's here. We might as well use it. We're not thrilled with it. Maybe eventually one day would love to do something like tear it down and put something really nice here but in the meantime we've tried to find uses for it for whatever we can um largely it's acted as sort of a summer spring summer fall playroom where the kids if they want to go outside but they can't quite go outside um can come out here and play um and store all their outdoor toys and stuff um but I'd like to make it a little more of an adult space and maybe a meditation space. Um, the impetus really is um, this uh, furniture set that I got, this patio furniture set. Um, it's one of those great things. Um, so I saw this set before retail and 
I liked it, but it was, you know, it was like a thousand something dollars. Um, and as way on my price range, well, I went to the restore for something else. Habitat Humanity Restore. So I'm going to... This is the thing here. I don't know if you can see. It costs me $318 for the settee, both chairs, the table, and all the cushions. Like, the cushions are the big deal here. I'm going to have to make covers for them, which is going to be a bit much. But, um... So... Because before furnishing the space was would have been like I wanted to would have would be sort of cost prohibitive. So it was, but this was such a great deal. Um, and if you Habitat Resource, a great resource for getting furniture or building supplies or even just like paints and stuff. They have like painting stuff and that they sell for a discount. So if you're doing something where you want to make something over, especially or. Uh, check, checking in on your Habitat Restore is every so often is a great idea. Um, mine actually has a Facebook, and when they get new things they think people like, they post it up there. So you, and if you don't go in that day, chances are you aren't going to get it. But um, So yeah, the toys are going out. Also, you've seen a lot of like fairy statues and stuff. Um, it's spring, and I have to put these out. This is also This room acts as storage, especially during the winter for a lot of gardening stuff. So my little fairy statues, which would go out in my yard, are in here right now. Um, I'm hoping I can kind of reclaim my greenhouse, too, and start doing seeds again. So this is going to stay out here, but, um, right now it's got we have all my, um, son's fairy garden stuff is in there right now, and some kid's stuff that, like, there's some really old beat-up moon shoes in here, which I think we can get rid of. Um, so, but you see there's toys out here, this is my castle, some, and some of going to stay, like these, like these castle building bricks and stuff, some of the toys are going to stay. Hopefully we can get a little better toy storage over in the corner over here, better than this tub. Um, but this is stuff I've, a lot of the other stuff I've collected over the years, and, um, this carpet, I'm not sure I got a new carpet, so you can kind of see it rolled up in there right now. Um, I found that on sale. It's one of those great big indoor-outdoor carpets that, um, they usually run $200, and then I found one online through Wayfair for, like, $90, which is the other big, was the other big cost prohibitive, because we have... So when we bought the house, there was a hot tub, and that's what this pink square is, is where the hot tub was. The hot tub was gross and broken, and, you know, we're not really hot tub people, so um, luckily it was not hard to get rid of. We said, hey, anyone want a free, slightly beat up hot tub? And there, were, you know, someone came and took it away for free, basically. Um, but the problem is, we actually has a nice, of, of all the things out here, it does have this nice tile floor, but then there's this. And I don't know if they had to do this because of the hot tub, or they did this because they're cheap, and they're like, well, we're putting the hot tub there, so we don't have to do the floor there. But to redo the floor would kind of be expensive, but I've got this great big, that big carpet's going to kind of cover that and hide it. <laughs> so, um, also when you're going to need to get rid of the blinds, I hate vertical blinds. The whole house was full of vertical blinds. Most of these have gotten, I don't know, like, most of them were kind of already ripped down when we bought the house, so... Um, yeah, they're, they're going to go too, and I'm not sure, I have, I have a, I had an idea for what I wanted to do, but, um, and I have some, I'm not sure I'm going to do it, but we're going to put up something that, so I can give a little privacy between me and the neighbors, because they're nice neighbors, but I'd like to maybe make that a little more private. On top of the furniture, I've got some other stuff that's been sitting out here, um, there's that, um, I've got, that was a present from my parents a long time ago, the, the sort of little ceramic side table there and it was outside actually in my old garden at, our, at the cottage for a while um, um that's part of the little angel fountain actually i'm hoping the the motor died i need to get a new motor or not the mo not the motor the place where the motor hooks i have to figure out a way to rehang it but it actually goes to a different fountain but the big fountain was a mother's day present from my kids and um, I never really got to use it because we put it out here and I was like, oh, I'll eventually do this and no. And you can see my, um, I have some faux stone carns. Um, one, one was broken, but it's really funny. My husband thought they were real stones and he was, um, so he just, um, he put something on it and it broke. So I have one I have to fix, but and I've got my little, little, little fireplace thing there that's really for candles more than anything else. But, so I've got some stuff to put out here that... And there's some other stuff around the house, and I'll come up with stuff as they go along. But so this is the sunroom, and um, it's going to be the subject of this makeover video. And so 
uh, I'll see you when my t once maybe we've got cleaned out a bit. So okay, step one was basically just to clear out the room. Um, took down those awful blinds of those brackets. I can't do anything about it right now, but they might be useful if I want to hang the lights I'm thinking about in here for now. So sometimes you just make do with what you do, but we kind of just scrubbed the wall, all the walls and stuff down. Uh, yeah, I know the floor looks kind of bad still. I mean, I sweeped it. So, I've got carpet. I just got out of its wrapping. I'm kind of worried now because it kind of, the one in the picture looked very green and pink. This one looks more green and red. But, um, as a temporary solution for something I got on clearance online, I'm not, I can't complain. Beggars can't be choosers. So here we go. Eternity later. Now, if I had been a smart YouTuber, I would have recorded a lot more of the process. In fact, I did think I recorded some of me sewing the cushions, but it I can't find that footage, which is probably for the best, and I'll explain why in a minute. But so we leave off with me rolling out a carpet. So yeah, but we went through, we thoroughly cleaned out the room, um, tried to make it, fix it up a little bit. Um, but like, and so you're not going to see, I would have loved to have recorded things like, you know, me sewing the cushions. I swear I thought I did, but we'll talk about why maybe it's good that footage doesn't exist. Um, me bringing in plants, me arranging the furniture, my, me and my husband hanging the lights, my husband setting up the pond, um, building the, um, building some of the stuff, that, putting together some of the stuff that's out there. But let's go ahead and take a look at the after. <laughs> I think it turned out pretty good and I'm going to give you guys a more thorough tour here in a minute but there's just some things I want to add so I was talking about why it's probably good I don't have footage of me sewing the cushions um I actually was like kind of gung-ho I'm gonna like I'm gonna do this and do the all this at once type decorating in 2020 because you know we needed stuff to the two um so I actually bought the fabric about the same time I bought the carpet um and like and I was gonna like sew those cushion covers like I have time. But the thing is, usually I like to sew in our dining room um, because I like to sit at the table and I like have work working at waist height. But at the time, my son was doing school at home. So I had set the dining room up to be his classroom. And I was like, no deal. I will totally Rachel Max see it and be a floor troll and I can sew things on the floor. And I got so frustrated so quickly. And so the cushions got put away and I was like, well, so for 20, for the rest of 2020, well into 2021, you know, that was my son's classroom and projects a lot of times got put on hold because that's where I would like to set up and do projects. And, but I didn't want to like disrupt his, you know, I can't, couldn't do that while he was in school and like, I, I don't know, didn't want to move his stuff around too much while, he, you know, mess him up in any way. So the cushions got put off until this year and I finally sewed them and I just you know 
took it took me like about two days total to, to do. I cut um, because not like time wise, I probably could have got it all done one day, but I had to split up between two days because I had other things going on. So I, one day I just cut all the cushion fabric out, and then the next day I just went through and sewed, sewed, sewed. <laughs> And so you guys will see that in the tour. Um, but the other thing I want to touch on is that like this was a slow decorating process and things accumulated and things there were things I found that I didn't know I wanted out there that I put out there and you'll kind of you'll see you'll I'll let you guess what that was. But um, so here is the tour and I hope you enjoy it. Let's take a look at the finished sunroom. Come on in, guys. Um, like I said, this is a very slow process, so I'm just going to kind of walk around and talk about some of the things. Um, the obvious thing is this is the furniture set that was in the before videos that I got at the Habitat for Humanity. Um, and like I said, it came with the cushions, and I found this fabric. And uh, this is, uh, I made the, I, made, I sewed the cushion covers myself. Um, and that was a little bit of an ordeal I talk, I'm going to talk about, I talk about here, but, um, I really overall love how they came out. I love how they match the carpet. Um, it's like they complement each other. It's not exactly the same, but it's like the same color palette. And I've got this great little arrangement here now. Um, and so there's a lot of, this is like where we come out now and we have like dinner out here or we can sit out here and read or sit out here at night and watch fireflies in the yard. We have dinner out here a lot. Um, it's just a great relaxing space. Um, my husband got this uh, wireless speaker and it lights up and so we can put music on at night. Um, over here are some of my plant stands and just when I talk about a variety of sources, uh, this one I recently got an estate sale a couple weeks ago so this is a more recent addition and this is one from a big box store. Um, my plants are from a local plant store called the Conservatory and they will come inside when it gets cold out but I don't know. I find they do really good out here. That's it's nice and warm. They get the right amount of sunlight. Um, I've got another one over here on my ceramic little side table. Um, and then we have to talk about the peacock chair. So I know it's not in the best of shape, but this was an estate sale find. I think I paid like five dollars for it, and it's mostly out here to look pretty. I will say is probably the least comfortable seat out here because. It, 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 you have to sit upright, you can't like curl up in it, you have to sit in the throne position. <laughs> um, and it's not bad, but you, to sit out here in lounge is not quite as pleasant. <laughs> but it's so pretty and I've always wanted one and it will stay here until unless I come across one that's in better condition that I can still get on my budget. So, but speaking, so, but let's talk about some of the plants out here because I just mentioned they've got those babies over here. Over here, it really is the plant corner. Let's talk about the plants, because that's one of the great perks of having the sunroom, is it is great to grow plants out here. I talked about my babies over there for a bit, but we've got lots of plants here um, from a lot of varieties. This is my son Victor's vegetable garden. We mostly have cherry tomatoes going on, and he went to camp over the summer for sixth grade, and they gave them mystery seeds, so these are our mystery seeds. Um, thinking they might be like cucumbers or beans. There's like four different plants in here and we'll just see what happens. <laughs> um, then this plant shelf, it was an amazing find. Um, recently we cleaned out my grandparents' barn and we found this wonderful cast iron shelf that used to sit on my grandmother's uh, back porch and this is where she kept all her plants and I was like so thrilled and I mean, it's kind of empty because I just got it, but like before all the plants were on the floor, so now I have all this room for more plants. <laughs> I'm trying to take it slowly and not overwhelm myself, but we've got a lot of different plants going on here. We've got some beautiful hanging plants. Also, my son is trying, we're trying to grow peanuts. <laughs> so, but I'm hoping more as time goes on, I can fill this up more over time. And then we also have some plants over here. We have our citruses and some empty pots. Um, also, you know, I've got a lot of my garden statuary out here. I don't know. It's, I'm not sure, where, it's last time I didn't know where to put it in the yard, so it's kind of taken up residence and out here, so sort of an indoor-outdoor garden feel. Um, I have the fan off right now because I want you guys to be able to hear me. <laughs> the fan is essential for out here. It keeps the breeze out here all the time. It makes it, you know, the airflow, so and it's never too hot out here also because it's, 
the sunroom itself, like I kind of said when I was going through, it's kind of this, you know, it, it it's like this manufactured thing that they, the previous owners put on, but it does have like these nice big screens we can open up and when we get a breeze through here, it feels really good out here. Um, also off right now is the waterfall because it is also very loud. Um, this was a gift for my kids for Mother's Day a while ago. Um, my husband finally, or I shouldn't say finally, uh, my husband put it together for me and it's really it's nice and it flows. Um, we don't run it a whole lot because it does have a lot of splash and it creates this little splash zone and it can, can be slippery in here. When we want like a watery sound or just have it on, it's very aesthetically pleasing. I've got more garden statuary, but the water you are hearing is from our patio pond. Um, this is something my husband put together and I absolutely adore it. It has a little waterfall in it and it's all planted and we have fish in here. Um, these are Japanese rice fish um, and they're actually suited for like staying outdoors in Japan. Uh, people there keep them in bowls and, and they keep them on their patios basically all year. They even winter out there. My, we'll probably have like some kind of heater in here for them during the winter and kind of maybe enclose this a little bit so the plants do well too. But um, which brings us to kind of the practical corner of the sunroom. First of all, we have this great uh, woven trunk and it just holds a lot of toys from outdoor stuff for the kids. Um, back in this corner, we have a smoker. So all the smoker supplies are stored nice and tucked safely back there. We can pull them out when we want to make stuff. And finally, the other part of the plant equation is this gardening bench, which I would not recommend buying whatever model this is. It was a very much a pain to put together, but having it has been very useful. Um, it, I'm going to move the bonsai because this is in here, but it opens up and then there's a bin in here so I can, you know, work on the plants and then when I'm all done, everything closes up and ah, it's stuck. It flies. Only because I'm doing a video right now is it doing this. <laughs> there we go. And it closes up and I have a surface out here for other things. Like if, we put, if we're having food out here and I want to make a little buffet, I can. Um, yeah, we, I'm a, this is from a bonsai from a place called the Flower Market in Dundee where I also got some of my plants and um, we're just trying it out because they have a great selection of bonsai. But, um, there's some decorative stuff. We got these cute little lanterns, but there's a lot of practical stuff like my watering can and my tools and the, um, my misters out here. We got this cute little bowl at the flower market for bonsais, but it's just holding the, the a old dead one for now. Um, uh, but this is, so this is the practical end of things for the most part. Um, got a lot of store, I've got all my plant stuff stored in here, extra pots. This is all soil and then I've got like different soils and mediums up here too, depending on what I need. Lots of extra pots and extra bits down there. So the last thing I kind of wanted to talk about was um, the lighting in here. And I'm probably going to put some footage of this at night because it's really pretty. So we have these Edison bulbs my husband hung up in here. Uh, the funny story is, so um, our local craft store was closing and I was going through and you know getting all the things I ever wanted because they were deeply discounted. And they had this box that said industrial lights or industrial light string for Edison bulbs. And I was like, oh, I'm going to buy, oh, that was like a great deal. It was like, I think they were like $11 each. And so I bought them and opened them up and it was the string and this, but there were no bulbs. <laughs> so my husband bought me these really pretty Edison bulbs and it's so beautiful out here when it's lit up. Um, it reflects in all the windows and it just seems, well, enchanted. Um, and then we do have one other light that hangs over the couch that is um, a solar light that so it lights up every night regardless of what we do. These have a, the, the ones hanging up have a switch but and it's also got an Edison bulb in there and it just looks really pretty out here. Like I said we like to come out here at night. It's very relaxing. So but so this was your tour of my enchanted sunroom. I hope you enjoyed it.
yeah, some final thoughts. And this is just me giving advice on decorating. And I'm the, the whole point of slow decorating is it doesn't have to happen all at once. Sometimes you need to change things right away. Like you need to get rid of something. Like when we first moved into this house, the dining room was completely covered floor to ceiling with mirrored walls, which is some people's thing, but I don't like feeling like I live in a dance studio. So that was an immediate thing we took care of. We took them down, which was a process. And um, luckily, I don't know, the walls weren't in great shape, but luckily the thing I wanted to do is I've always kind of liked the Venetian old world plaster look. So we put plaster on the walls and it's one of my favorite finishes in the house. Um, but it was an immediate thing that needed to be done because I really could not go into my dining room and stand to be in there because I just saw me staring back at me from every direction. And it's, it's like I said, that's a personal thing to me. There might be people out there who are like, mirrored walls, that sounds great. Um, but sometimes there are like things you want to do immediately because it's like you just cannot stand it. But other times, like, it's great to let, you know, yourself kind of um, sit and think on things and explore things and you find things that you didn't know you would wanted or that you think, oh my god, that's absolutely beautiful and I want to incorporate it somehow. Um, and so my advice to you if you are decorating any room in your home is don't feel you have to do everything all at once. Even with the dining room, we did the walls right away but it has kind of shifted. Originally I was going to go on it to look very medieval and um, rustic and it's kind of shifted more because I got more into steampunk and um, my husband's very into sort of adventure, um, Indiana Jones type stuff. It's morphed more into what we call the Adventurers Club and there's all sorts of sort of like steampunk art and stuff. And it's still, those walls still work with that. There's still sort of this Victorian version of medieval going on. Um, but the, the room's changed and is adapted as to we've kind of figured out more what we want going on in there, so. Slow decorating. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed my sunroom. Um, we enjoy it immensely. It's just one of my favorite spaces in the house. To, like I said, we spend a lot of time out there now. Um, I do like to go out there and read. Um, I mean, I'm looking out. That's right over there. I do like to go out there and read. Um, we, we eat out there. Um, it's just, you know, it's just a nice, pleasant place to go meditate. Um, and um, I'd love to hear from you guys. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on my decor. If you don't like it, that's okay. And let me know why. Maybe you have some great criticism I can take and use as I move forward. Um, I'd love to hear about your spaces and what you've done and how you, you know, if you if you are a slow decorator, how what, what your process is like. So leave me comments below. I'd love to hear from you guys. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Just listen, if you want to say hi, hi. <laughs> I'd also, if you want, you can connect with me on social media. I have links to my Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter below. I will say I'm probably most active on Instagram, but Facebook and Twitter, I will see you guys there too if you, you know, hit me up. If you like this video, please go ahead, give it a like. Uh, please check out my other videos. I do a lot of codgecore and enchanting and decorating and aesthetic. Um, so check them out. And if you like what you see here, please subscribe. And you can always catch up with the latest and the greatest that way. I hope you guys have an enchanted day, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!